Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to talk about Bleach with my trusty Quincy hunting knife, Zan Pato. <laughs> it's on the small side, but I'm not a man that needs to compensate with big things, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Kids, don't try this shit at home for your own safety. I care about you. So, this is a Bleach discussion video about villainy. And I, I'm here to make a statement. In my mind at this point in time, Yuha Bill, Yuha Bach, is a better villain than Solsuke Aizen. Now, three things off the gate. Number one, the characterization as a villain for Yuha Bach is not done yet. This arc is, well, I don't know how long it has left, but he still has room to grow as a villain. That's very obvious. Number two, the same thing may apply for Aizen. Now, Aizen was shown a little bit in the beginning of this arc, indirectly through Yaba, but we're not too sure if he's, he's going to come back as a villain, specifically. He could come back as an anti-hero or a good guy straight up and join Ichigo and company. Who knows? No idea. Very possible. And number three is that we are talking specifically about them as villains. Because Aizen has characterization, aside from being a villain, because he was a good guy initially, when the Soul Side arc started, obviously. So, and plus, he does have more chapters dedicated to him as a character in general. In flashbacks, and so on and so forth. So, we're talking about specifically them as villains. Now, the reason why Yuha Bach is a better villain in my mind than Soul Side Aizen can be categorized in two main categories. Number one, a sense of danger. Number two, the things we don't know. The mystery, the veil. And let me start with the first one. Yuha, I think, had a much stronger, had a much more impactful introduction, him and his boys, as opposed to Aizen. And I say this to give you a gist of what it, like, some separation between Aizen and Yuha. Because Yuha is far more intimidating, he is far more imposing than Aizen. Yuha and his boys, they killed the former vice captain of the first division. I forgot what his name was. The guy with the lightning powers. They could steal Bankai. Then he brutalizes Yamamoto after he tries to summon his Bankai, gets, a, gets that stolen, which he still has somewhere in his pocket, mind you. You are bon fucking Yamamoto's Bankai of the fucking Sun Armor. Shit. And then you have his boys, such as Gremi, kill or pseudo kill well yeah like now they're pseudo dead because of uh, Myri, but whatever they kill rose they kill kensei hitsugaya pseudo dead kind of i don't know what's going on there uh same thing with matsumoto and then you have komama who's now turned to a dog he's out of action and they've been far more intimidating and opposing than the espada have ever been let's be honest here Truth be told, you have some of the most epic shit with the Espada. But you have even more epic shit with the fucking Quincy. You really do. We them boys! They took out the fabled Royal Guard. With ease. After they got their power-ups from Yuha. And I gotta say, Aizen... He liked to talk a lot. I mean, he sat there and he had monologue upon monologue upon monologue about what he would do. And a lot of times he got countered on so many fronts. Like, for example, a big thing here was when he was in Hueco Mundo, he left Ukior in charge, went to Katakura Town to make it into the King's Key. Boom, Yamamoto and company there. We knew you were going to do this shit. And... This happens many times, where he gets countered, up, countered upon, countered upon, countered. And I'm not saying that as happened to Yuha, and I think it has. But Yuha has countermeasures in place of countermeasures. It's like, bro. And every time they try and best Yuha, they fail. Everyone has failed. And I gotta say, Aizen is more, again, he's more of a talker. He talks a lot, and then he does a lot of things that at first seem like they're crazy, but then later on it's kind of like, um, yeah, 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 yeah. 
And at the end of the day, he could not reach the Soul King's palace like he wanted to. Yuha did so fairly easily. Ichigo comes down. Ichigo, you you got more powerful. Well done. But guess what? You open the freaking gates to the Soul King Palace. While you go down, I go up. Pieces. Gone. You can't find me now, bitch. And it, it was some badass shit. It truly was. And he brought weed and boys. He brought weed and boys. Furthermore, Yuha, he's a doer. Because honestly, in a lot of ways, Aizen, he reminds me, he reminds me of uh, Obama. Not even joking. He talks a lot of stuff and it sounds good. It's, it's it's very impactful. Like, yeah, nice speech. When it comes to actions, not that much going on, is there? Nah. But Yuha, mm -hmm. actions. Oh, a lot of actions. And he's effective. And I gotta say, when it comes to a leader subordinate relationship, even though both leaders haven't been the best, they're not exactly like caring of their subordinates, and it's to be expected because they're villains. The fact of the matter is that there is a much stronger and keener bond between Yuha and his villains that makes his subordinates even more imposing. When you have someone like Chengdu, and mind you, I wasn't a fan of Chengdu dying because he didn't have a complete holy form shown yet. And his powers are relatively unknown and so on and so forth. But when you have someone like Chung De, who would die only by the hands of Yuha. He refused to die by the hands of Hashvid. It was only through Yuha's hands would he die. Would he be willing to die. That's some hardcore shit. You don't get that same level of loyalty. I mean, maybe you get it through Tosin, but that one's iffy. And Tosin is Aizen's most loyal follower. Straight the fuck up. Komamata. Nierze. Oh. I mean, his character was shot anyway, but whatever. The thing here is that Jin, Ichimaru Jin, he betrayed Aizen at the end of the damn day. You have the Espada, who Aizen was able to subdue. But they weren't like hard. I mean, fucking shit. Bargain, Reason, Ballard took his fucking axe and he threw that shit at Aizen. He's like, fuck you, Aizen. I, I, I didn't want to serve your ass anyway. Star didn't really care. He just wanted friends. Hattie Bell was pretty trustworthy, but what did Aizen do with her? Aizen freaking cut her. He's like, fuck you. I don't need your shit. And it continues to go down and down and down the line. And it was impressive initially that Yuha, that Aizen... He was able to subjugate these Arankara, these vast lorded class Arankara with his sheer power. But Yuha is, is. I mean, having his boys on lock doesn't even cut it. Like, they. Do you think Hashball is going to betray Yuha? Do you think any of his Quincy's, as opposed to. Or I should say Star Knight, Star Knight, as opposed to Uryu. Because Uryu, he has been a main character for a long time, who's a, who's a hero. So, him betraying Yuha is expected in the future. But anyone else, do you think it's going to happen? Fuck no. It ain't happening. And that's what makes him even more poison. Because with Aizen, to a certain extent, it was like a ragtag group that was thrown together because Aizen was powerful. That he disposed of at the end of the damn day. Hattie, but I don't need you. Mm, cut. When it comes to Yuha, they're a military might that is very effective. That is substantially effective. And it's like, fuck, these guys are nasty. They come in there with their Quincy fucking uh, foot soldiers and they're slaughtering Shinigami all over the damn place. Yuha himself has such an, an, an imposing aura. Remember when this arc first started off? They were in Huecomundo, and he was taking a rancor that were going to follow him. And he was landsliding the rest of them. He had Hattie Bell changed up, uh, chained up. Hattie Bell's Hattie Bell, the third Espada, the now Queen of Huecomundo, is Yuha's sex toy. Are you serious? And then the rancor that he found... Uh, that, that they didn't serve his needs anymore. He just killed them on the spot. He blew their fucking brains out. On top of killing the first... Uh, on, on top of uh, killing the uh, vice captain of the first division. And Yamamoto. 
and the way he treats his subordinates with that ruthlessness. Where in Aizen's case, he doesn't have the death impact that you really kind of need sometimes unless you have substantial progression in your villainy. So if Aizen actually succeeded in reaching the Soul King Palace, then we could have, we could have overlooked him failing to kill anyone. I mean, he tried to kill Hitsugaya how many goddamn times? And the kid is still, well, pseudo-dead alive-ish at this point in time, whatever. And when it comes to Hinamri, same, same, damn, same damn thing. Alive and kicking. Pfft, my God. But you are? Hmm. He made sure Yamamoto get knew I was fucking dead. Ah, huh. so I'm going to steal your Bankai. So he, ha he has his Bankai in his fucking pocket right now. And I'm going to cut your body in half. I'm going to step on your skull. I'm going to eviscerate you with those fucking flurry of arrows. Are you serious? Like, this guy, he, he's disgusting. And plus, he does have that German Nazi factor to him, too. Which makes him even more imposing and more intimidating. Like, you're really scared. And then, plus his powers. Eisen had phenomenal powers. He, well, he has. He's still alive. Eisen has phenomenal powers. He's a Koka Suigatu. Fucking illusions. Like, you're, you're, you're done, bro. Like, shit. Yuha can see the fucking future. OD class. I can see the future. And it's scary as fuck, man. He knows everything. No, dude, no. Aizen couldn't fuck with that power. Because you already know what the fuck he was doing long ago. It's bonkers. And then it's the weight of history. And this ties into the second part, the mystery. We know that you has been around for, what, a thousand plus years. Already created an incident a thousand years ago. Had this freaking Quincy War and shit a thousand years ago. Yamoto Genusai back in the day when he was considered a fucking demon. And he had to take on Yuha's ass. There's some weight to that shit. Aizen, we don't fucking know shit. Not only that, but when it comes to Orihime, Aizen, what the fuck do you do? Remember the whole thing with Orihime and how he somehow altered her? At least that's what Okior hinted her, how he's not how she's not fully, you know, human anymore. She's one of them now, some shit like that. And how he needed her powers, the powers to negate God or whatever. What what the fuck happened to that? Don't know. Don't know shit. And there are still some things about Yuha's story that are still left a mystery. Like, for example, the ties to the Soul King. Did the Soul King see his son as a danger to Soul Society? Therefore, he himself tried to kill his own son. How did, like, how did they seal Yuha for a thousand plus years? So on and so forth. There's a lot of shit that we don't know yet. But odds are we're going to find it out. Or we're, we're, we're going to find out later on as the arc continues. Aizen, on the other hand has been out of commission for an arc and more because the full bring arc was all Ginjo bullshit. And then at this point in time we see a sliver of Aizen and it's been a few years since its arc first started. And we still don't know a lot about Aizen. I mean, we got some through backstory through Ishin and that was obviously very informative about Aizen how even back then he was still manipulating. But that was I think even well I forgot from a timeline sense when that was. But the point here is that there's still so many things that we don't know about Aizen Sosuke. That honestly is pretty infuriating. You have a villain as substantial as Aizen for the majority of your series. And he has the biggest shrouds of mystery around him. Why did Aizen, when did Aizen meet the Soul King? How did he know what he was? When did Aizen change his perspective on the Sede tape? When did he begin half his experience? Shit like that, you know? Aizen is a character that needs so much more light shone upon him, but we haven't gotten that much at all. And it's very unfortunate. Because you ask history... He's had less time as a villain in the overall story of Bleach. But his history is pretty much 
it, there's more history of Yuha revealed. There we go. As opposed to Aizen. And that to me is very surprising when you look at it. It's shocking. And it does kind of take me aback from Aizen as a villain. So, overall, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'll leave it at that because this video, I'm not going to say that this is the last time I do the video because this may change later on. This There may be a few things revealed and Aizen may come back as a hardcore, substantial villain once again to the story. But at this point in time, I mean, shit, in the last chapter, it looks like Yuha Bak manipulated the hero of the story, Ichigo Kurosaki, to cut down the Soul King, therefore bring upon the destruction of Soul Society. Yuha is he is successful in leaps and bounds, where Aizen is not. Aizen just talked a lot, man. And true, it was cool as shit when he talked, and he would do his thing, and he'd be all slick and badass, like, yeah, what up now, dog? At the end of the day, he was shut down on so many fronts, encountered on so many fronts, and betrayed on so many fronts. But you hop ain't none of that shit. He's, he's clean, squeaky clean. Niggas covered in wax, looking like Randy Orton, baby oil. Nigga smooth. She. Come on, no, 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 no. It, it's too much at this point in time when you compare the two as a straight up villain. It's too much. Both Yuha and his boys, every Quincy from the ground up, is far more imposing and intimidating than any of the Arankara. And the only exception I would give is Ukiyora, because he did blast a hole in Ichigo, but we know what happened then. Oh, holes in Ichigo? Ain't mean shit. Ain't mean shit. So, I mean, it is what it is. All right? I mean, truth true be told, it, it is what it is. I mean, fuck, even Gremmy, who killed on some super stealth shit, Rose and Kense is more intimidating than half of the Espada. More than half of the Espada. Straight up. Not even joking. Not even fucking joking. So that's it. That's it. I'm done. So, overall, the chapter. <laughs> what am I talking about? No, those are my thoughts. <laughs> I brain fart for a second. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think about this topic at hand. And again, this could change in the future, but I don't really see it changing at all because you all have just been too damn good. All right, Aizen has to have five or six deaths, character deaths. Like he, 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 Aizen has to kill off like if he comes back, he, he has to kill off like Soifon, Kenpachi, Biakia, who really fucking should have died. <laughs> Biakia should have fucking been dead. Whatever. Uh, Hitsugaya. I mean, if he's still pseudo alive, Hitsugaya, then. Just kill him, fucking for Christ's sake! Christ, I'm sick of this guy. But he has to basically. Eisen has a lot of work ahead of him if he's gonna come back to the story in order to be on the same level as the current Yuha when it comes to villainy. Let alone way, let alone the way Yuha may turn out to be towards the end of the arc. Just saying. So I say I'm done. King of Lightning, give me your thoughts on this topic. Rate the video. Rate the video. It's not that hard. You have a mouse. Click. It's not that damn hard. Trust me. Rate the video, comment, subscribe. Have a nice one.